Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast, what the world is listening to. What is up, everybody? You are checking out the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, The Hot Commodity, joined by my friend and longtime co-host. I like his background. You're like matching today. You're going very theme black and white, <laughs> uh, black and white. Uh, you can hear, dude. Hi. I'm cr- oh, my bad. I'm, <laughs> I'm Christian. Um, sorry, I'm doing some insurance stuff, but SmackDown, dude. Sorry, I'm not my computer's charging, so I'm over here for now. But actually, I'm gonna go back to my setup. But SmackDown was so fucking boring last night, guys, or the other day as we're recording this. Um, I, I definitely think it's been weaker since Cody Rhodes uh defeated Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40. Um. But we'll talk more about it. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I know it's going to be a hot take, but SmackDown's just unlocked. Yeah, I agree. Not a lot is going on aside from the Bloodline Cody Rhodes stuff, but we'll talk about it. So, WWE Friday Night SmackDown from July 19th, 2024, live in Omaha, Nebraska. It starts out with the WWE uh, Undisputed Champion, Cody Rhodes, coming out to the ring. Cody says, Randy Orton was my mentor, and I would not be here without him. Randy is my family and my brother. I want to look directly into this camera and talk to Solo Sokoa. I looked Solo in the eyes, and I told him, you are not ready. You cost me the very title I am holding now. With everything you have done, how does it feel knowing I am champion and you're not? And then randomly, A-Town Down Under come out. Austin Theory says, Cody Rhodes, you're spending a lot of time talking about the bloodline because of you, Jacob Fatu, attacked me and my cheek is swollen. Cody says, your friend kicked you in the face. That's why your cheek is swollen. Grayson says, Austin Theory got attacked because of you. Your friend got hurt last week because of you. And then Cody Rhodes decides to attack both men. They beat down Cody Rhodes until Terrence, Terrence Crawford gives Cody a chair. And Cody takes out a town down under. Uh, we come back from break, and Cody wants a match with them, a handicap match. But Nick all this tells Cody he must find a partner before the night is over. So I kind of already had a feeling who the partner was going to be uh, before they announced it. But what do you think about? Like I like Cody's promo about how you know they took out Randy Orton. This is right. meant for his friend. But I really didn't understand why A Town Down got involved. I know that you know Theory got attacked by Jacob Fa too, but I don't know. It kind of reminds me of like kind of like Attitude Era, where everybody sort of like got involved. Like there was this one moment, um, really random. I was just covering it the other day when I was doing it. The Rock was fighting the Big Boss Man, and yeah. The Rock got the win. And after the match, like the Hollies ran down for like no reason. They weren't involved in any storyline with The Rock. There wasn't any beef. They just ran down and started to attack The Rock, and The Rock just took him out. So it kind of reminded me of that moment where you have like guys not really having a reason to cause trouble, but just because they're bad guys, they don't like the good guy type. But what did you think of this uh, promo and A Town Down Under challenging? Uh, so first off, this was probably the most boring promo I've ever heard. A world champion cut. I mean, this guy Cody Rhodes literally cut the most. Like the dude sounded like a fucking robot. Um, I, here we go, feuding with the fucking former tag team champions like they weren't shit when they had the titles anyway i don't i I don't understand cody's shit like i gave it some praise when um what's it called um 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 oh my god i'm losing my train of thought when he fought aj at backlash in france their second match was better that match was good because like in Cody's uh d- like character, like the character Cody Rhodes, mm-hmm. he that um he showed a little bit personality that you know like at the end of the match where like 
he AJ said I quit, but then he still like hit him with the steel. Like that was the Cody Rhodes I liked, you know, in New Japan and AEW where he was still kind of baby face, but he was like he had that heel instinct in him when he was a baby face. Yeah, that's all gone away. He's still back to that politician suit and tie off of the kids type of shit. And th- this promo just had no energy. It, it looked like he didn't want to be there. Yeah, I don't know. For somebody that's the new face of pro wrestling, especially WWE, this lacked enthusiasm. This was a fucking lousy promo. They had nothing going on with him on SmackDown. The whole SmackDown show just sucks. I just don't know if uh, Solo is really going to be able to deliver. Um, no, he's going to get carried. The, the, if that match main events SummerSlam and Roman Reigns does not come out, I'm going to be fucking furious because why not have Punk and Drew main event it? Why not have Gunther and Priest main event it? You know, the championship match that actually has been getting the buildup. Now, I'm not saying Solo and Cody doesn't have the buildup, all right? They have history with the bloodline, all that shit. But, I mean, you don't see Damian Priest attacking, going after, I mean, his faction is also the tag team champions. But you don't see Damian Priest going out there and, you know, going at it with awesome truth anymore that while he's in the about to have a title match at SummerSlam, like, I don't know. Like it, it, it's a big difference. Yeah. I think the problem too with SmackDown is their roster seems so limited and the they don't past, have yeah. And the past couple of weeks, all the storylines have been mainly the bloodline. So you, it's hard to really like have it. Yeah, any- that's, that's that's the and I don't mean to cut you off, but that's the only thing they have on yeah. on the smack on the SmackDown side. I mean, okay, you could. I don't like LA Knight. I'm not gonna deny that he's over shit with the crowd and that you know he he he's he's something you know. Especially, I would actually like if LA Knight could somehow win that US title, and I'll get more. Actually, you know what? There's a segment about that later. I'll talk about that. Later. Okay. Okay. Um, well, next up we have uh, Carmelo Hayes and Andrade, and this is actually, I thought this was a decent match. It was a decent match, but I'll explain then. Uh, so Andrade hits a springboard Spanish fly, double knees in the corner, he gets two, uh, Andrade with a moonsault, Andrade jumps into a first 48 by Hayes to get a two, and then Andrade gets the win after hitting the message. Uh, I was surprised Andrade got the win. I mean, that's probably surprised. I like Andrade. Um, but uh, he hasn't won anything lately, so I feel like he needs to win. But and I feel like a lot of people might think, well, Carmelo Hayes deserves a win. You know, he's new. He's an up and comer. He's you know better than Andrade. But if you really want to make like Andrade big. You want him to be a guy like Romel Hayes, who has a future. You know, if he if Andrade kept on fighting Apollo Cruz every week, you're not going to take him serious. But he got a big win over a guy like Romel Hayes, who a lot of people are going to say is going to take over WWE down the line. But what do you think? All right. So I agree, but I disagree. I agree that. Maybe Andrade could have used the win here. He hasn't done nothing besides he's the speed champion. Um, he hasn't done much. I, I, I will agree on that. Now, the reason why I uh, I don't think Carmelo Hayes should have lost this, lost this match, even though I'm not a fan of his at all. Um, he was the number one overall pick in the draft. The number one overall pick in the draft over Cody Rhodes, over Seth Rollins, over Roman Reigns. And this guy's losing to the speed champion. I, 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 I don't get I, I, I don't I get it. Carmelo Hayes is very early in his main roster career. There's still plenty of time for him to you know develop and become this big star that maybe he will be. I don't see it right now. When you're the number one pick overall and you're barely qualifying for the money in the bank match, you barely did anything in that. You go out there and you're losing to the speed champion. What kind of number one overall pick is? What's this? That's the thing that bothers me. But the thing is, man, like, and I hate to say this, 
But in all actuality, the draft is just a way to get rid of it. You know, like I forgot, like I don't even know the, the picks. Like I don't even yeah. know the numbers. I don't know the picks either, but I, I remember everyone, oh, Carmelo's the first overall pick. Like he's going to be in the main, car, main, you know, he's nowhere near the main event level on SmackDown. They should no just stop doing the draft because, like, like, um, like you said, like you remember because of all the people bringing it up and talking about it. But like, since the draft, there really hasn't been like any real. Like back in the day when I was growing up with it, there was like competition between the shows. Like you always felt like, like whenever they would have a pay per view and come together, like Stephanie and Eric Bischoff would like argue with each other they were always like fighting to get the person on their side yeah. there is more stuff now it's just like okay we picked you and they did it also to kind of make it look like espn you know they did a very like and so, it's just so, it, it dumb like it's stupid look, and I, this is the thing go about ahead. the about the draft real quick like because we're talking about carmelo it's the number one overall pick smackdown in general the reason like it worked, and I'll, I'll say I'm, I'm not going to make this long. It worked a little bit because you had – this was the SmackDown – like, 2000 – I'll give 2008, 2009 an example because that's when I was a kid. SmackDown had Rey Mysterio, Edge, CM Punk, Hardy, The Undertaker, Kane. Raw had Shawn Michaels, John Cena, Triple H, Randy Orton. It was balanced. That's why it worked, and they did a bragging rights pay per view every year. If they were do, if they were to do Survivor Series, the traditional brand versus brand, I would have no problem. But since Raw's going to Netflix, and they they need their big superstars on Netflix, they, they don't have anybody for guys like Cody Rhodes to go against guys like Randy Orton. It's going to be a repetitive. And Raw, you can mix everyone around because there's so much talent. I mean, it's a three hour show compared to this. What if they? Just get rid of the draft by Raw and just be like, it's don't okay. don't have a draft at all. Let the people, let the superstars compete on all of it. If they want to do Raw and SmackDown, you let them. And if a lot of these Raw guys want to go to SmackDown, you should, because you want to know what the most enjoyable SmackDown was recently. The one where they were in Chicago and Punk and Drew had it. You had two Raw guys come. You, that's all you need. You just need two more guys like that to have the show interest. Yeah. I feel like they're spending a lot of time on Raw because it is going to Netflix. But in I Netflix, like they, like the more people are about to view it, like, I get it. Like, get about I, SmackDown. But it's SmackDown's fun. like, yeah, good. No, you're fine. Well, let's move on, and then we're going to take our break in a little bit. Uh, we have WWE Women's Champion Bailey and Nia Jax having a split-screen interview. Nia says, look at me and Bailey." Feel sorry for her because at SummerSlam, I'm going to put her out of my misery. Bailey says, Naya, you haven't changed at all. Uh, Naya says, you should address me as Queen Naya. Bailey says, I'm not going to. You're the same heartless woman. The, and you're the same heartless woman with a big mouth. In 2017, you took me out of my SummerSlam match, and that changed my career trajectory. You hurt me because you're big, clumsy, and reckless. Nia says, I'm the queen of this division. I'm coming for that title because I'm taking it off of you. Bailey says, I want you to look at me. I'm walking into SummerSlam with the title, and I'm walking out with it no matter what you do. And I want to say really quick, I like this promo, but it made me think of something, and I don't know if it's going to happen. I said it right after the promo took place. With her saying, um, I'm walking out with the title no matter what. You, I'm walking in with the title, and I'm walking out with the title no matter. I have a feeling that Tiffany's going to cash in and win it. Um, oh. Because, so what I think is going to happen is I have a feeling Nia's going to lose, or something's going to happen with Nia, and then Tiffany comes in and wins it. Because she just pretty much said to her, like, I know it sounds dumb and it's just semantics and who cares about words, but she said, like, no matter what you do, I'm walking in as champion and walking out as champion. And for the past couple of weeks, Tiffany has been under Naya's wing and Tiffany would do something to try to help Naya. 
Yeah, because she's a stupid bitch. And for all we know, Naya could look at Tiffany like, hey, yeah, beat Bailey, and then I'm just going to destroy you because I <laughs> doesn't really view Tiffany as a threat. Um, but what, and then I did like the part where Bailey said, you're, it's not because you're, uh, you know, scary, just because you're big, reckless, and clumsy. And the clumsy part was awesome because she is. But with uh, three minutes quickly, and then we'll come back. What do you do? You think of? I don't need three minutes for this. Fuck Trif- Tiffany Stratton and her fucking fans. Let me tell you something about Trif- Tiffany Stratton. She's just hot. She got a little bit of Charlotte Flair in her, but she's just hot. I you'll never hear me say it's Tiffany time, especially after. The, and look, I don't, I don't use personal reasons to judge professional wrestlers when they're in the ring and their character. I don't. But when you're a racist and you make a video calling Jade Cardro an N-word and you use the hard R behind it on a sound, I can no longer support you. So fuck you. I hope Nia Jax smushes your ass when you try cashing in that title. You're never going to be a women's world champion. You're just going to be a hot, dumb diva. Wow, man, Tiffy time. Not for I you. do not like Tiffany. I never liked Tiffany. I'm not supporting a race. Isn't it crazy though how like with like with these two, that just shows you the division where it's at with uh, my girlfriend and- hates Tiffany. Well, well my girlfriend who's never seen wrestling, we're watching it. Like she, Tiffany spoke like two words and she was like, get this bitch off. Yeah, like Tiffany oh, has my- that personality. Oh my but, god! Like at least Chelsea Green makes it work. Chelsea Green's great, but I think that you know we're talking about Bailey and Nia, but the whole time our focus is on Tiffany. And Why? It kind of shows, well, I, it's just because it, no offense to Bailey, and wow, my face is purple because the Roku. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm yeah, the Damian Freeze. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh. I just think the women's division on SmackDown, like the uh, other part of it, is boring. Bailey's done good, like she's been uh, like a champion who defends her title, but it just hasn't really been anything great. It's been lackluster. So the only interesting thing, unfortunately, you know, to some, including you, is Tiffany. Um, but I do hear what you're saying and respect your thought on it. That you know, you feel she's a racist and everything. I choose well, to- it's the racist. It's just when you. An interview, some guy asked her, and like she just like, yeah, like I had like I posted it, I deleted it because fans were annoyed by it. Like she didn't really sound like she cared. Like, I don't know. I, I just if if I'm taking all that aside, I still don't think she's impressive. I just think she's hot as fuck. Like she does the same moves Charlotte does, like and with a oh my god, I'm Tiffany. Like, just her, her, her personality like, alone. Sucks. It has nothing to do with that, that video. What's the name of the dude who just tipped over the two ups? And that's who? Tiny Tim. You kind oh. of look up Tiny Tim on YouTube. Yeah, I, f- I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll let, with less than a minute, quickly, who do you think is going to win at SummerSlam, Bailey or Nia, after this promo? I think, I think Bailey's going to retain, but I, I do think that stupid idiot Tiffany's going to catch it and walk out with SummerSlam as the World Women's Champion. Okay. All right, we're going to come right back, and we're going to talk about So we are back uh, after that little video break in between. And uh, we're coming back to talk about more women here. We have Chelsea Green with Piper Niven taking on uh, Bianca Belair with Jade Cargill next. Uh, Chelsea slaps Bianca to start, and that's not really a good move on Chelsea's part. Bianca lands a German and rolls up. Chelsea Green to get a quick victory here. After the match, the women's tag team champions Alba Fire and Isla Dawn appear on the Titan Tron. They will give, they say that they will give uh, Bianca and Jade a glimpse next week at the women's trials because when it comes to a rematch, we'll see. Where are you thinking of the women's tag division right now? I mean, doesn't mean much. I mean, when. I got, I don't know, when, like, Bianca and Jade had him, like, they were okay. Um, I I still think it was unrealistic that they even lost it to begin with, because when you look at those two, no one's fucking beating him. Um, 
but it wasn't. I, I don't. I don't care about the women's tag division. Honestly, I, I just. I, I want Chelsea Green to do a little more of her own stuff. Get away from Piper Niven. Get away from all that. That's why I wanted her to win Money in the Bank because she has a better future than Tiffany Time or any of those fucking idiots. So it sucks. It sucks. But well, I think Chelsea's Green. I think her time will come. I like Chelsea. I wanted to see her win as well. Um, I knew she wasn't going to. It's Chelsea. I was sitting here yawning. That's <laughs> nice. Um, but I guess that's how we feel about the women's tag team champions and the women's tag division right now. There's really nothing uh, great happening. Uh, but speaking of great, Nick, all this is out next for the contract signing. He has LA Knight come out and WWE followed by WWE United States champion Logan Paul. Logan says, why would I give Larry the Lobster looking at Larry the Lobster a shot at my title? LA Knight says, you talk about there's no reason to fight me. Every time we have been face to face, I have owned and cooked you. A year ago, I told you to give me directions where to stick every prime bottle. I asked you for a shot and you say no. Your goofy friends let me in your house and all it did was to get me to pin you. And earn my shot, um, you know, at Money in the Bank. Logan says, listen to yourself, um, Sean. You need this match, but I don't. We are not the same. Your entire existence is in this ring, not me. I changed the landscape of culture. Uh, you want to be champion, but you're not him. You have not had a single moment in 20 years. You're a... Jim Bro pretending to be The Rock. Uh, L.A. then says, Low-key Logan Paul, you're a fraud pretending to be a champion. You mentioned your brother. Your brother is willing to fight Mike Tyson, but you don't have the balls to fight me. I guess balls don't run in the Paul family. Logan then says, you want this? I'll sign your contract. After I beat you, you will have nothing. I'm drawing a map where you can stick your dreams of being champion." Logan Paul attacks LA Knight from behind. LA goes for the BFT, but Logan Paul ends up in the arena. So what do you think here of uh, this contract signing? I mean, LA Knight got under Paul's skin. All right. To get him. So I know I've been very critical of LA Knight in the past, Los Angeles Knight. I know I've been critical of you in the past. I've called you overrated. I've called you a one uh, word hype, overhyped man. But you better take away that United States Championship away from Logan. Now, I think LA Knight should win because he is going to be at SmackDown next week. Now, this is what I wanted to get into earlier when I said I would wait till we get here. The reason why SmackDown's lacking is because, well, not the reason, but when you look at Raw, even NXT, you have your main champion is always in the main store. That's the case on SmackDown. Now, the reason why SmackDown feels boring is because where's the United States Championship? Logan Paul has been United States Champion for over seven months and has defended that belt twice. Twice. He has defended that title twice in seven months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why not giving that? I get it. This guy has... I mean, he... He's taking a picture next to Donald Trump with the title. I mean, Donald Trump. Yep. You know, I um, I think, you know, um, gave the United States title a lot of publicity. Mm -hmm. But he's not defending it. I'm a wrestling fan. Although I, I, I might like Trump, I don't, that has nothing to do with professional wrestling i don't care if he's holding the picture next to michael jordan lebron if he fucking goes to the olympics and holds that title he is not doing anything for us wrestling fans to elevate it and that's the problem at least with la night he'll be on tv every week he'll be elevating that championship and we'll see matches and more story but it's kind of hard to do something when your secondary champion who's also one of the biggest stars of the brand doesn't fucking show up like, it actually pisses me off. Like, people complained about Roman Reigns, but 
Logan Paul isn't the established wrestler like Roman Reigns was. Roman Reigns is probably the greatest of all time. Logan Paul will never be that in this business. So why is he having two title defenses in seven months? He is not like that at all. So LA Knight is taking that damn title in his hometown. So who was it? I think Logan Paul was like, I'm quoting my mom, and she's like, you'll never lose a title if you never defend it. Um, so I think his whole goal is to, um, like, be silly and, and, like, you know, like, not defend the title and be, like, a fake. Like kind of like a uh, like a scare champion. He really he does defend it and he does it well. But when he does defend it, it's usually his friends, it twice. and it's usually his friends helping him, you know, retain it. So I want to see LA Knight get the win. I don't know if he's going to, but I really hope he does. Um, he better. I hope so, but I don't know, man. I mean, look, I, a lot of people thought this guy's time was the last money in the bank. I know, but then he kind of got forgotten about, you know, with everyone. Because El Champon. You, you know, yeah. El Campeon took his spot, that's why. Yeah. Let's talk about this next match. I know you're not a big fan. We got Tiffany Stratton with Queen Nia Jax taking on Meechan. Uh, Nia distracts Meechan, allowing Tiffany to land an Alabama slam to Meechan on the floor. Um, Meechan lands a dropkick and a tornado DDT. Uh, this is when things get interesting. Tiffany hits a rolling senton. WWE Women's Champion Bailey shows up. Nia runs at Bailey, and Bailey moves out of the way. Queen Nia goes straight over the railing, and then Bailey grabs Tiffany's money in the bank briefcase, hits Nia with it, and then steps, stomps on the briefcase, breaking it, and then Meechan rolls up Tiffany Stratton for a three count. Meechan beats Tiffany. I know you're happy about that. But what do you think about Bailey breaking that briefcase? We're gonna get a new briefcase, you think, or do you think Tiffany's gonna walk out with it broken like that? Oh, she's gonna have a whole new prank briefcase, bro. They're about to make mad money off that merch. I like. I want. Do you think they're it's about gonna to make so much money what? off merch? Oh, they're they could, like they did with Damian Priest. I almost bought it, but. The whole senior money in the bank. I almost bought it. WWE's about to make a four. If they hold that briefcase on her past SummerSlam, yeah, they're going to make a profit. That's why they did it. Listen, I don't want to believe that they said they believe. I don't want to believe that they believe this hard in Tiffany Stratton. What the fuck is she? She's a gymnast who's hot. There's so many other people like her on NXT. So many people like. I, I I will never – she needs to do something that utterly makes me go, holy shit, like this is the best female superstar of all time. Because she's not better than Rhea Ripley. She's not better than Charlotte. She's not better than Becky. She's not better than Nia, and she ain't better than Bailey. That's uh, just- I'm excited. It's, well, you know, and something to bring up, you talk about, you know, she's attractive. With Raw going to Netflix, I mean, maybe they want her, you know, for – this is another year. We got 2025 coming. That's when they're going to move there. So, I mean, maybe they want to use her. You know, she's she's attractive. She can oh, do and they're right. like, She's attractive. She. Oh, I hate that. I hate her. I hate her. Tiffany Stratton, man. Uh, speaking of people that I don't like, the bloodline, we get a promo. So it says, who's going to step up and disrespect the tribal chief? Have you seen what we did to Randy Orton? If you're on Cody's side, you're against the Tribal Chief. Tonight better be a handicap match or someone will pay. I am the Tribal Chief and you will acknowledge me. Uh, but, obviously, we know no one's afraid of this new bloodline because we have A-Town Down Under versus WWE Champion Cody Rhodes. And as Cody walks oh, the oh. ring, he sees Kevin Owens and Kevin Owens is his mystery partner. Um, that was stupid. I know. It wasn't really a great match either. Uh, the end comes after Grayson pushes Austin Theory into a crossroads. And then Cody hits a stunner to Grayson Waller. And Kevin Owens and WWE champion Cody Rhodes get the victory. After the match, the bloodline immediately come out. Kevin and Cody tap control until Jacob Plot 2 shows up and annihilates everyone. Jacob hits four hip attacks in the corner to Kevin Owens. The bloodline hold Cody 
um, as Solo hit, or it's Jacob hits a flying headbutt to Kevin, and then uh, the Bloodline hit a triple power bomb to Cody Rhodes through the announce table. Tom Batonga puts a chair on Kevin Owens' neck and tosses Kevin into the ring post. And again, SmackDown ends with the Bloodline destroying everyone in their path. What do you think of this? I think SmackDown needs Roman Reigns. I think we should have had this between Solo and Roman a long time ago. I don't think Cody should have lost. I think we should have had this. Um, I've been so happy and proud of Jacob Fatu. I cannot wait to see what he does on his own. But <laughs> I, I, it, this new bloodline, um, it's I can't take it as serious. I mean, when you have Solo coming out here looking like a big Samoan version of the weekend, um. It's, I literally can't take him seriously. Every time I look at Solo, I think of, hey, look what you got. I'm a star boy. Like, oh, the I weekend. Okay. I don't take him serious. Um, I, 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 I don't know. Like I said, if that match main events, the biggest pay-per-view of the summer and Roman Reigns doesn't come out, it's going to be a disappointment. Um, there's I nothing, know. there's nothing there. There's nothing that none of them's done that's made me feel like these guys need to go to war. Like Punk and Rollins or like Punk and McIntyre. Like you, we all know that, right? There's personal mm -hmm. history, all that. Even Braun Breaker and Sammy again. I mean, Braun Breaker has been coming out every week and just beating the shit out of Sammy. I mean, now I want like, I have a reason why, like, I'm not getting that from these two. Yeah. It's just like sort of like we're gonna put them together because Solo wants to prove he's better than Roman and beat Cody. So and that's yeah. Bloodline's the biggest thing in SmackDown. Cody's the champion. You gotta have him. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, they had this man beat John Cena in front of a Saudi Arabia crowd, knowing yeah. this crowd probably paid millions of dollars to probably see John Cena win, and they didn't do shit with him out there. Now he's going after the Universal Championship. I know, man. It's very everything sort of doesn't make sense. Um, I just I this don't know. I'm excited. I'm smoking on that Cody Rhodes pack right now. That's all right. Go right ahead. Um, I think uh, I have a feeling that we're gonna get Roman. I hope we get Roman at SummerSlam um, because this new bloodline they are doing powerful things. They are eliminating the competition, but there's just they're missing something. And uh, I feel like yeah, no one in that group has aura. But so, yeah. like, this is what I think needs to happen. If Roman Reigns isn't going to be a part of this new bloodline, they really need to let Jacob Fatu do the speaking. Now, I know a lot of people, probably like you, Ant, aren't too familiar with Jacob Fatu's work. Um, we all know he's cousins. With Usos, we know he's Tomatonga's kid, but I don't think some people truly understand the what this man is capable of. This man doesn't play a character. He, you might think of, oh, he's a thug. If he ever does his promos, and you guys think like this dude's like a thug, like because he is. Mm -hmm. This guy is about it. He doesn't. He's his natural self. He doesn't need a character to make him over. And that's why I'm so excited. And I think they need to let him soon take control in this. When his feud with Solo hits, that shit's going to hit like crack. Because so Jacob, like, will really say, okay, nigga, I'll beat your ass right now, bro. What's up? And then the crowd's just going to go crazy. Like, oh, he just said that on T. Like, he does not care. That's why Vince McMahon didn't want to sign him for the longest. Bro, yeah. but this man is so dangerous. That the only reason why he was allowed at Money in the Bank, WWE had to fight the most highest people of higher people you can think of when it comes to letting people inside the country because they're ter they're they're they viewed like Jacob's a dangerous man. Like they wouldn't let him into Canada. So like he had a, he did the show in Canada and I'm sure he had a fly right back home. Like he's 
amazing. And I'm happy that, you know, all of his personal struggles are, are out of the way and he's in, he's where he dreamed he wanted to be. He's in the WWE next to his family. Like he said, he was in jail when he watched him on TV. So yeah, he his, has like a story, his story, his aura is amazing. That's the only thing I'm excited for looking forward towards this new bloodline. Other than that, I'm ready for Roman Reigns to get better. And uh, Roman Reigns needs to come back. Well, we've covered everything on SmackDown. Decent episode. Um, really nothing like great. Just more of just the same stuff that we've been seeing the past couple weeks on SmackDown. We've got we've got Raw, another SmackDown, and then another week of Raw and SmackDown. And we got SummerSlam. Surprise! It's so early in August, but um, everything's I, yeah, I know everything's gonna all the pay per views are early, but no, this was good. Um, if I'm here to talk about Raw with you, um, if I'm not, all I'm going to say is fuck Gunther for calling Damien Priest yeah. Street Street All Rise for El Campeon. Street Trek. It's almost like he, I'm just like he's fucking Aladdin or something. I'm like so confused. It's like, when did he get this like gimmick fuck of like being Gunther. trash? But I don't no, it's, it's going to. Raw, Raw was great. Raw's the best and my favorite weekly episode of wrestling in any company. So if you guys didn't check out Blood and Guts last night, check it out. It was really good. But yeah, that's all I got today. Like, is, is what is Mariah May's gimmick now? Is she like dressing like herself or is she Tony Yeah, Storm? It, it dude, her and Tony Storm was awful. I, I love Tony it. Storm is Tony Storm is the Wim AW Women's World Champion, and she means nothing. Literally, Mercedes Monet and Britt Baker is the number one women's feud, and that's the secondary title. That's a why not just give Mercedes the world title? I know. Why don't you give Mercedes the world title? Then? Like this, Britt Baker and Mercedes is a feud that should be for the world title, not the fucking secondary TV network yeah exactly i agree i definitely agree with that a lot of the, match, the match itself was good i don't care what anyone said okay i'll have to check it out i also have to watch the mjf osprey match i still haven't watched that one. mjf osprey was good um you're not gonna see osprey have a, a match like that where he's not doing the flippy flippy shit yeah because even though i love that stuff you know he was in a ring with mjf mjf knows he's not doing that shit putting up it was a good match 60 minutes of wrestling yeah. So I see it. Well, we will be back with more stuff coming your way. Make sure you check us out. Where can they check you out, Christian? It's Russell TV, baby. Always, always, everything. Twitch, Instagram, YouTube, fucking it, X, now as Twitter, Twitch. Yep, Chris Russell. Let's go. Chris Russell. All right. I'm excited to check you out on there. And until next time, everybody, you stay safe and stay uncensored.